This is an unsponsored video that contains products provided without charge by the manufacturer for demonstration purposes. All opinions are my own. The Tesla Front Trunk, or Frunk, is a great innovation that provides convenient storage under the hood, or bonnet if you're from England. The only problem is that the hood is aluminum, and you have to be very careful how you close it. As you can see in these pictures, it's so easy to dent that soft aluminum that I rarely used my frunk. I do believe Tesla will eventually motorize it, but for today I'm going to show how I installed an EV Offer electric frunk kit on my 2020 Model Y that completely solves the problem. To remove the frunk, start by unsnapping the service panel at the back. Just use your fingers, no tools are required. Next use a 10 millimeter socket to remove five bolts holding the frunk. Two on the bottom, one by the washer fluid tank, and two by the latch. Pop the panel out from the top and lift straight up. Then carefully remove the connector from the light. Use your fingers to release the frunk from the several snaps around the edge, and then lift it safely out of the way. I was impressed how clean it was after two years and 16,000 miles. That's what happens when you don't have engine oil. The first step is to replace the two struts on either side of the hood with motorized ones from the kit. I was working by myself, so I propped a scrap piece of wood to support the hood while I was working on the struts. I used a little masking tape to protect the paint, and I used a long thin screwdriver to retract the clip so I could remove the strut from the ball. To remove the bottom, I used a 13 millimeter open end wrench to loosen the bolt and then unscrewed it with my fingers. I fully intend to save the original struts in case I ever want to put them back. The kit comes with two brackets and screws that will hold the bottom of the new struts. They're clearly labeled left and right as viewed from sitting in the car. I originally used a 3 16 hex wrench to tighten the bolt, but it was too small to effectively tighten. So I found a T30 Torx bit worked much better. The struts are identical, so it doesn't matter which one goes on either side. The end with the wires goes on the bottom, and they just snap on the balls. I had to give you just a little behind the scenes. <laughs> this is sometimes the best camera to use when you want to get a tight shot. The other side was more challenging because of the obstructions. And I'm also right-handed, so I'm less coordinated with my left hand. With both struts installed, I made sure they operated smoothly by hand before proceeding.
The kit comes with a power connector that contains a 25 amp fuse. It gets connected to the positive terminal on the battery. There are two wiring harnesses in the kit. The first has a really big connector that will attach to the control unit later. For now, I need to identify the ground wire and the D5 connector and route them under the cross member towards the front of the car. I plan to attach the control unit to the top of the cross member later. If your car has a HEPA filter, you'll need to put it further back. I attached the ground wire under a bolt where other ground wires were connected to the frame. It's important to mark the location of your latch mechanism before removing it. Some people use tape for this, but I found a Sharpie marker worked very well. I loosened the bolts and unplugged the sensor wire. The car makes a sound when this connector is unplugged and replaced later, so don't be alarmed. The kit comes with a latch motor and a bracket that fits over the existing latch. I carefully removed the spring with pliers, installed the actuator on the post, then replaced the spring. The bolts go through the latch plates to sandwich the two of them together. I lined up the latch to my previous marks before tightening the bolts completely. The other wiring harness contains three sets of signal wires that will be installed in this order. The one with the blue connector goes on the actuator that releases the latch. The one with the purple goes between the original latch and the original connector. There's that noise again. The last connector goes to the sensor on the new latch plate. Next, connector D5 goes on the latch motor. And the latch motor gets secured in the cavity next to the radiator using zip ties. Next, you need to connect the two harnesses together using connector D1. As a reminder, don't force any connectors. If anything doesn't fit easily, use a screwdriver to align the pins and try again. Next, pop out the toe cover from the bumper by pressing at the two o'clock corner. Run the emergency cable out the hole and secure it to the jump start wires. Note that this cable will not release the front latch, so nobody can steal what's in there. It'll only release the latch kit's motor in case of a failure. Next, remove the white clip from the battery connector and insert the B-plus lead from the wiring harness. 
It only goes in one way and it'll click in place. Okay. Next, the strut wires get connected to the harness with connectors D3 and D4. Remember, both struts are identical, so it doesn't matter which strut gets connected to which connector. Just be sure to double check that the pins are straight before you insert the connectors, and don't force them. I ran the passenger side strut wire behind the air intake, but that's really up to you. Next, I plug the electronic control unit into the main harness with the massive connector that actually locks in place. One last detail is to connect the buzzer to the harness as well. All right, everything is installed. When I plugged in the ECU, this light here starts blinking and that is normal. And there's a little button right next to it that is used for testing. And the first test they say is you double click and you see if the latch moves. Something's not right. It's latched and I don't know why it's latched. All right, so one of the problems I was having when I adjusted this before, the latch I think was latched. So <laughs> it was it was not testing correctly. So what I'm gonna do is the first test is actually you push the button twice and it does a it does a partial pull but it releases. That's correct. If it does the pull and it, it latches in the half latch position, then this is too tight and you have to loosen it up. The first time you double click it moves the latch but it doesn't pull it down into a latched position. So that's good. If it does latch, even in the first latch position, then this needs to be adjusted. And then the second test is you hold this down and see if it latches fully when you double click. And it does. And I can see that it looks latched in the car, that the it thinks the trunk is closed because it's in the latched position. And then I'm going to click this to open it. I did say trunk, I meant frunk. And there you go. And then it pops open. All right, so that test is complete. All right, with those tests complete, I can now push and hold the button and it'll beep. All right, now it's ready to actually test with the frunk itself. Okay, the next test, I'm gonna use the app. You could do it from the app or you could do it from inside the car. It shows that the frunk is open. I'm gonna click the, actually the close button. And now it shows the frunk is closed. Now it's the same button for open and close, by the way. So now I'm going to say open. And there it goes. Okay, all the connectors are zip tied now. I put them to hold them nice and tight to anything that was there. And I put a couple more zip ties on the, um, the ECU just to hold it because I found out that it could actually slide back. So that has loops on the side, that's held in good and tight. And I think everything else is good too. Now I am ready to put the frunk back in. Right now you can see the frunk is closed. I can click the open button and it opens on its own. And you just click the open button again and it will close on its own.
If you are a DIY video creator struggling to find an audience, join Handy Dad TV and get instant access to an established audience that will provide more views and income than you're getting on your own. Just go to handydad.tv join for more information.